Hi, and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today we're going to be looking at this Amstrad CPC 6128. We're going to be fixing it up, making sure it works, and then restoring it because it needs a lot of work. I don't know if you can appreciate it like that, but it's dirty, this thing is lifted, and you know I don't even know if it works. So we're about to find out. This is most likely going to be a multi-part video, and today we're going to start just by looking at the built-in 3-inch disk drive. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Let's get going. Okay, here we have the drive. Uh, it's a 3-inch floppy disk drive. It's a pretty unusual disk size, but you can find it on Amstrad computers and also the Spectrum Plus 3, which was manufactured by Amstrad. The PCW also has them. So what we're doing here is going to be applicable to all those computers as well. I haven't even tested it yet. I just opened up the Amstrad and pulled it out. I didn't want to test it because the first thing that I'm going to do is look at the drive belt and that's most of the time it's completely destroyed to the point that if you turn it on it's just going to make a goopy mess inside and it's going to be harder to clean it up than it is now hopefully now it's just in pieces and we can pull it out pretty easily okay in order to get to the drive belt uh, we need to lift up this board you can't just remove it completely so it's going to be awkwardly trying to get underneath but it's it's the only easy way to get to it by the way there are some variations on this kind of drive most of them are the same some of them have two screws instead of three or they have newer models but it's it's all basically the same you always have to remove this board or lift the board this model has these cables here and they're preventing this from opening up a little bit more so i'm just gonna grab a uh, some thin pliers and pull it out without destroying it. There we go. <clears throat> this just gives us a few more centimeters opening. And you can hopefully see the drive belt there. It's white <laughs> and moldy. And I suspect that I'll touch it and it will break apart. So good thing we didn't try to turn it on or we would have had all that mass wrapped around this area here and it may be hard to get out. So let's see if I can do it with the camera. Let's see. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it just comes out in, in little pieces or the goal would be to get bigger pieces. I mean, this <laughs> is just... Uh, it's pretty bad. Well, pretty bad. No, this is horrible. But the good thing is that it's not the goopy kind of decomposition of the um, drive belt. So nothing is actually getting stuck, um, which is great. We won't have to do much cleaning up. Um, is this everything? It's hard to see the camera. I'm going to spin this a little bit. Ah, so. Just a little section right there. Let's see. There we go. I can get it in one piece. Ah, keeps breaking. There we go. There we go. I think we got it all. Okay. The next thing mm -hmm. is to apply some alcohol with a cotton swab like that and mostly we want to do it around this axle right here which is the one that tends to get dirty so I'll get a little closer to the camera wow it's tricky with the angles here and the light and all of that but you may be able to see that yeah I mean it's it's not bad I mean this is not like when we have all the um, all the drive belt stuck in there, but it should be, I should do this. And now As you can see this coming out a little dirty. This is nothing, by the way, this is nothing. When sometimes the rubber just decides to melt and, and it's a mess. Oh, there's a, a piece that, 
I missed earlier. There's another reason why we're doing this. You can see it's getting dirtier. Yeah, it's important that when the new belt goes in that it's as clean as possible. We don't want to have bumps or sticky places or anything like that. There we go. I think that's I think that's reasonable. All right, before we put the drive belt, I wanted to show you something. In this kind of drives, right around here, and under the board here, there is a metal pin. And that pin is used for the mechanism that detects if the right protection of the floppy disk is on or not. It controls whether you can write to the disk or not. Unfortunately, that pin, if you move this board a little bit out of the way like this and you turn the drive around, it falls out. And it's a very common thing that people have happened. They, they open it up, so they turn it around. And when they do, it falls out. When you assemble it together, they might go, oh, what is this little metal piece? I don't remember ever taking it out. Mm, doesn't matter, the drive works. Well, it works in read-only mode. If you try to write to it, it will, it will tell you that you can't. So it's, oh, wow. So in this particular drive, it's already missing. So somebody had that happen. So you see right here, there is a hole. That's where the pin is supposed to go. And that pin will activate this mechanism over here. That's, that's part of the right protection detection. So somebody had that happen which is really surprising because nobody's replaced this belt. So I don't know, maybe somebody opened it up, saw that belt and, and closed it in, in fear, but they lost the pin along the way. So we're going to have to manufacture our own pin, which is not difficult. We'll do that in a second for now. Let's put the new drive belt. Here's the new drive belt. As you can see, well, this is this is one that I bought that has correct dimensions. It's a, um, I forget what the width is. Um, what is that, a couple mil millimeters? So we need to pretty much put it under there, get it to go around that wheel over there, and then around this axis here in front. This is, this is it's not difficult. It's just awkward um, not being able to remove the the board very easily. Um, now you can see why people would lose that pin because it's very tempting to, to flip it around when you're doing this. Uh, I think you went in, that's actually pretty good. Okay. So yeah, it went right in. As you can see, it's uh, pretty tight. And I can spin it a few times just to make sure that um, it stays in place, doesn't come out. Let's see. Just spin it with my finger. Yeah, looks good. Nice and tight, okay. All right, so to manufacture a new ride protection pin, all we need is a paper clip like this. It turns out the paper clip is right about the right width, which is great. We just need to cut the length and then give it a little, a little head on top. So the total length needs to be one centimeter. So that's perfect. That's that's one centimeter right there. And then we need to give it a little head by, by twisting it. So let's see, I'll cut it up right there. There we go. And now I'll bend it with this. Is that, well, we can always cut it. If it's, a, if it's too long, we can always cut it at the very end. So let's give it Let's collapse the head a little bit better. Okay, that's that's perfect. And the total needs to be one. So yeah, we just need to cut a little bit off the back. I think that's perfect. Let's see if it fits. Let's bring this over. This should go in that hole in there. There we go. There we go. Fits perfectly. 
All right, we can close it up now. So it's just a matter of fitting the LED that goes in front in place. And let's not forget these cables that we unplugged earlier. Let's just push them right in place. There you go. Okay, so let's put the three screws back. So before testing it, there's one thing that I like to do, which is to lubricate well the different moving parts. For example, I like to put a drop of oil, just generic oil, right there, just very carefully because we don't want it. We don't want it touching the drive belt we just installed and then starts getting all slippery. So just like that. And then on the other side, there's a couple a couple spots that need some lubrication. So one of them is right there. This is the shaft that makes the drive head advance and retract. So it needs to be well lubricated to avoid any friction. And same thing here. This is the rail where it moves back and forth. So some people recommend putting um, some kind of grease. I find that grease can be just a little too heavy and then it can interfere with the movement of the, um, of the drive, especially if you get some dust or something. So I just like to Put just one drop of oil. I mean, there's there's clearly some grease from the factory already. So one, one drop of oil in each place. And then we can move it back and forth by hand by rotating this screw over here. So that moves the drive back, all the way back, and all the way forward. Oh, oh obviously move it later when we connect it to the computer as well, but this is good to do that. And then the rail, same thing, I'm gonna put a drop of oil right there. And then have it quickly move back. Yeah, this feels smooth. I don't feel any resistance or any, any weird friction. And then something here. There we go. And we'll move it forward again. Perfect. And that's about it. I mean, we can put a drop here. This is a spindle. It's usually not necessary. One last thing before turning it on is to clean the head. The, you know, it, it looked clean, but might as well. Um, give it just some alcohol and we put it right there and carefully we scrub it. It looked really good before, but it's, it's, not a bad idea to give it a quick pass. And that's it. At this point, we need to um, plug it in into a working Amstrad and try it out. And we're going to use the Amstrad to do some final adjustments to get it just right. All right, so here we have a working Amstrad CPC 6128. This is the one from my collection. So I just pulled out the floppy disk drive. We know that everything works, uh, which is great. And now we're going to plug this one in and test it. So it's just two cables, the data cable. It's just like that. And the power cable, which is 12 volts. This is why the uh, Amstrad CPC 6128 has um, two power cables come into it, five volts for much everything and 12 volts for the floppy disk drive. So all we have to do is uh, to plug in the 12 volt power supply on this cable. This is what's going to activate the disk drive and let's turn it on. Okay, it, um, computer starts up as normal. Just a quick test. Let's just um, try to access the disk drive. There's nothing there yet, but it should, the motor should spin up and we should hear it. Okay, it spins up and it tells us that the disk is missing. Now we can pop in the disk. Let's see if it reads it correctly. Tell it to retry. Perfect, it works great. Now that we know that the disk drive is working correctly, we can try adjusting the rotation speed, the RPM of the drive. Ideally, it should be around 300. It's okay if it's a little bit further up or a little bit down, 
but it should be around that. We have a utility program here that will measure the RPMs in real time from the disk. And there we go. It's telling us, wow, it's spot on. It's telling us that it's 301 RPM, that it's perfect. Normally I would not touch it. Um, I would adjust it if it's over 310 or under 290, um, but otherwise I would say that's fantastic, let's not touch it. So if we had to adjust the RPM rotation, this is the motor that takes care of the spinning. This is the motor that moves the head backwards and forwards. This is the one that needs the 12 volts. This one, you can see there's a hole in here. If you put a thin flat head screwdriver like this, preferably a plastic one, this will do in a pinch, very carefully insert it in that hole. Sometimes you even need to punch through a little bit of rubber that is there. You'll find an adjustable uh, resistance. So you can adjust that, move it very slightly left or right, and in real time, you'll see the RPM change in this um, app. So you can tune it so it's you know, pretty much 300. It's fine if it's five up or down even more. Um, once, it's, once it gets past, I think, 310, um, or, or 290, then you may start running into problems. So, but that's the way to do it. Do it carefully though. There's some models of this disk drive that um, it's very easy to push that adjustable resistor and actually break it, like not necessarily break it, but make it, you know, have it come loose of where it is. And then it starts touching things that it's not supposed to touch and well, just be very careful. There is one last test I wanna do which is to make sure that we can write to the disk or not. So right now the disk is write protected. This tab is down, right now it's not. So let's, first of all, just make sure that we cannot write to the disk. That shouldn't be difficult. If the pin was missing, it would tell us that we can't write. So let's try saving a file. It tries to save. Perfect, it tells us it's write protected. So now let's remove the write protection. And now it should let us write to it. Retry. Sounds good. Great. And we look. You see that test, that bin is there. So that worked great. All right. So we have a working three inch floppy disk drive. So that was mission accomplished for today. Next time, we'll continue with the restoration of this Amstrad CPC 6128. We'll make sure that it actually works. And if not, we'll fix it up. And then the final part is going to be to give it a good cleaning and scrubbing and leave it in brand new condition. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if so, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.